Hey there folks, today I'm going to go over how I rig my Topwater 120 PDL behind me right here for trolling for trout, uh, kokanee, or big salmon, so chinook and coho salmon, things like that. Um, just so you're aware, uh, Old Town is going through a rebranding process of its kayak fishing line, and the new Sportsman PDL 120 is essentially the same boat as the Topwater 120 PDL, so if you're considering that boat, um, this video will also be very helpful because essentially they're the same watercraft minus uh, some minor changes in the storage well area and the seat. Otherwise the cockpit configuration is going to be nearly identical. So this will be very helpful for you. So let's get started and let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, so let's start from the front of the kayak and work our way back. So what we have here in the front of the Topwater 120 is a storage hatch. This would be a good place to store a battery internally if you decide to wire through hole and have your battery stored on the inside. Typically I would do that, but because I plan on transitioning to the Sportsman 120 in the near future, I haven't done it with this kayak, but I will do that when I go to the Sportsman 120. Uh, the pedal drive system on the Topwater 120 is a PDL uh, drive from Old Town and it is a prop based system and it, what i like about this is it's instant reverse hands-free i don't have to reach down and pull a lever or anything so i can simply just change the direction i'm pedaling and that gives me the ability to slow down um, or even change direction all right so the key thing about this kayak and how i have it set up for trolling are these two parallel tracks of gear track that run along each side of the cockpit. You'll see on the right hand side of the kayak over here I have it kept pretty clean just a single rod holder and the reason that is is in the event that I rolled the kayak this is the side of the kayak I'm going to come back in to the cockpit and self-rescue whereas I rely heavily on the left hand side gear track for mounting my fish finder transducer arm, which I have on this flexible transducer arm from Ram Mounts. Um, I've tied that all into a single uh, two T-bolt spline base, and I've changed out those with Ram balls so I can mount the fish finder on there. The rod holder goes in the center one, and the flexible transducer arm goes on the other and I've got a really good video on explains how I set all this up and I'll put links to that on the opposite side I just have a single rod holder um, which is the same rod holder I have on this side which is the ramrod HD rod holder it's a bit oversized but it's really good for those um, fisheries like chinook and coho salmon where they're really slamming that rod this rod Holder is very durable. It's going to last a long time. You can also lock it if you need be, and you can attach a GoPro camera. So basically what I have is this configuration where I have two rod holders pointing off each side of the kayak in those fisheries that I'm allowed to troll with a two pole endorsement and use two rods at the same time. Now, a lot of the fisheries that I fish in for trout, kokanee, and salmon, I can run two rods while I'm out there fishing. And the typical configuration I'm gonna use here is like I said, these two rod holders pointing out away. And the reason I like them pointing out and away from each other is that's gonna give me a little bit better spread. So oftentimes I'm trolling big dodgers and flashers and things like that and having these two rods spread out like this now because i'm running typically seven to nine foot long rods i have an almost 18 20 foot spread that i'm covering and with these arm extenders on these ramrod mounts i clear out the deck space in here so that i can pedal without smacking my knees on these rod holders now another configuration that i might use Let's say I'm in a fishery that um, I'm only allowed to run one rod, or maybe it's a fishery where it's a bit of a combat fishery. So there's a lot of fisheries like this for salmon and steelhead in the Pacific Northwest, where it's basically bumper boats out there. And having a 20 foot spread just really isn't reasonable because you can't squeeze in there and you're more likely to tangle with other boats. I'll flip this rod holder around 
And now I'm going to alter the angle just a little bit on this rod holder here and loosen it up so that my knees don't hit the rod. And I'm gonna run the rod across in front of me. And then with the weight of the flasher, it's going to basically come right across in front of me like this. This causes the dodger and flasher or whatever I'm running to run tighter to the boat straight behind me. I'm less likely to tangle with boats adjacent to me because I don't have this big spread. And it also makes it really easy for me to just grab the rod out of the rod holder and start fighting the fish. So that's another configuration that works uh, really well with this, especially in those combat fisheries. So in the kayak uh, for my electronics, which are absolutely critical in determining uh, where fish are, the depth at which fish are, my trolling speed, I'm running my Hummingbird Helix 5 Chirp Generation 2. So I have down imaging, I have traditional sonar and GPS all built into this unit. Um, it's very easy to access right here from a relaxed position and I can see everything I need. Uh, currently, uh, like I said, I'm running that transducer mount. I just coil up the wires here and stash them down in this pocket, or I can wrap them around the base of that rod holder. Uh, and then I'm running the battery down underneath the seat here using Dakota lithium batteries. Um, like I said, if I plan on keeping this kayak a little bit longer, um, before changing over to the Sportsman 120, I would probably run a through hole mount here for the wiring for the battery and run it up to a battery storage underneath that front hatch. Okay, so let's go to the rear of the kayak. In the rear of the kayak, I'm storing a few things. Um, always on the right hand side of the kayak, if I'm sitting in the co cockpit, I'm going to have my uh, knotless nets. Then I use a Costco insulated grocery bag to store all of my fish and catch in and drinks and all that stuff. Um, it'll fit a couple king salmon in there, no problem, and plenty of limits of kokanee and trout. I then use a bright orange tackle box. This is actually an emergency kit box here, those marine storage boxes from Plano. Um, they have a rubber gasket in them, and then I put my tackle in there. That way, if this goes over the side, it doesn't take on water immediately, and I can go retrieve it. Then I've come around the back here, installed a small section of gear track here, not only to mount a camera mount, but also a safety flag. This allows me to be seen while I'm out there in those combat fisheries and not get ran over. Seems like the fastest way to get a million views as a kayak angler on YouTube is to get run over by a powerboat but I'm not really game to go that route. So I'm gonna use the safety flag. For additional rod storage, I've actually just taken a couple chunks of PVC pipe and zip tied them to a, a vertical rod tube uh, wall mount storage system from Berkeley. And that allows me to add a couple more vertical rod storage in the back, um, simply because I have so much going on back here, I can't really run a traditional milk crate. And then I use the vertical rod storage built in by Old Town. Okay, so as far as uh, what cart I'm using to transport my kayak from the vehicle to the water, which is also a very important part of getting out and fishing, is I'm using the Malone ATB Wide Track. This double bunk system they have here is absolutely ideal. Almost seems like it's perfectly designed for the tri-hole design um, that's present on these Topwater and Sportsman's PDL kayaks. So I'm gonna show you how I get that up on there really quick. And you can see how it will ride perfectly in those bunks right on the underside of the kayak. And it's extremely stable. So I'll run one strap forward of the chair here. I could probably shorten that strap down a little bit and then just pull that nice and tight. And then I run the other section just straight over the back. Very simple and tighten it down as well. And this gives me a really secure grip on of the cart on the kayak. It's not going to go anywhere.
Then I make sure to flip up the little stand and I'm ready to haul the kayak away. Here you go, you can see, very easy for me to carry a fully loaded kayak with that Malone cart on there. Hey there folks, if you have any more questions regarding rigging your Old Town Topwater 120 PDL or Sportsman 120 PDL for trolling for kokanee, trout, or salmon, just let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to get back to you. I'll put links to all the products that I demonstrated in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure and hit that thumbs up button, like, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys out on the water next time. Bye.